Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the January 2019 USPS Rate Change, What You Need to Know webinar. We will start at about two minutes past the hour. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the January 2019 USPS Rate Change webinar. We will start in a couple of minutes. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the January 2019 USPS Rate Change webinar. Can't believe it's already halfway through December and we're already talking about 2019 rate change. So a few things before we get started. So the meeting instructions. There's a GoToWebinar meeting link if you're not on it already. All lines will be on mute until the end of the meeting. If you do have a question, you can click the hand to ask a question, and we will unmute you after the call, after the session. Or you can type your question in the question box, and we will do our best to answer all questions. There's also two options for audio. You can either use your computer for audio or your telephone. Uh, the dial-in is right there, 562-247-8321, and there's an access code. There will be an audio pin provided. Make sure you plug in that audio pin. Otherwise, we will not be able to unmute you to ask your questions afterwards. To get rid of the GoToWebinar control panel, just make sure that you click on that little orange arrow, and it will minimize the screen. This presentation is being recorded today and will be made available upon request. You will also be able to find it on our website after the session under FAQs and resources. If you do have any questions during the session, please contact myself, Doris Tam, at 888-977-6245, extension 512, or email me directly at doris.tam at postaladvocate.com, and I'll be happy to assist. 
So a little bit about our speaker today, Adam Lewinberg. He is the president of Postal Advocate. He, of Postal Advocate. We are the only mail audit and recovery firm in the US and Canada. We manage a portfolio of 121,000 pieces of mailing equipment for the largest US companies. He speaks and teaches nationally on mail savings and industry trends. He is the former industry co-chair for the Boston Postal Customer Council and a member of the Mailing Systems Management Association with certifications in CMDSS and MDC. He's a featured writer for the Mailing Systems Technology Magazine, and he worked for one of the largest mailing vendors for over 17 years as the director of national sales for pre-sort, tabletop, inserters, addressing, hardware, software, and green offerings. He was one of the top five account managers nationally, working with some of the largest of the nation's accounts. <clears throat> Over to you, Adam. <clears throat> Thank you, Doris. So, good morning, everybody. So, sort of, a, there's this is an interesting rate change. I mean, I study these things, and I think they're interesting. But you know, you may or may not. But the one thing about it is there are differences about what the post office is doing, which tie to the task force report that just came out from the USPS. That basically, we'll, we'll go through some highlights of you know as we go through this, but basically saying the post office is going to be having more rate increases in the future to make sure that they can maintain profitability, which they have not been doing lately. So in some areas, we're going to see you know, significant rate increases. In some areas, we're going to see them staying flat. And in, but in a few areas, we're going to see them going down. So we're going to talk about each of those so you can see the impact. So what we're going to cover today is what rates are changing, how it impacts you, what you need to do, and then savings tips. So we always, when we do these, these webinars, we like to talk about how can you save money in, the, in lieu of the fact that costs are going up. I mean, overall, you have to bet the budget for the fact that your costs are going to increase. And we'll show you how to calculate that and how it can impact your structures. Um, but we're going to go through a lot of different ways that you can actually reduce costs in your mail uh, from things we're going to talk about today. These rates go into effect on January 27, 2019. They always go into effect on a Sunday, and they do that because to make sure that you have all the rates downloaded properly into your meters, and that when you come in Monday morning, typically the biggest mail day, all your stuff is ready and waiting. So we're going to focus on the most common rate structures. It's impo there are just too many rate structures at the Postal Service to go through each one, and a lot of them, frankly, are very niche. In other words, they're only, they're, they're only for certain types of organizations that might do them. So we're going to cover the most common mail categories that the majority of you are doing today. If you have questions on others, we'll give you links to other resources where you can go to find those. And if you have a question on them, you can certainly feel free to reach out to us. So first class mail single piece. 7.6% decrease to a 10% increase based on weight. The most important thing is, a stamp is going from $0.50 cents to $0.55, cents, a 10% increase, probably the biggest increase we've seen in years on the price of a stamp. So the post up isn't, isn't talking about this as a 10% increase in postage. What they're talking about this is overall, on average, it's less than that because what they've done is they've made the second ounce, which used to be $0.21, cents, uh, now $0.15. Cents. So the second ounce goes down by six cents per ounce. So as you're doing heavier items, the cost actually goes down. But the majority of mail that people send are one ounce letters. So you have to factor, you know, if, if you're looking at this, you should probably factor at least a five to eight percent increase overall in your first class mail. Um, postcard rates are staying the same. Flats, you can see flat rates are basically not changing for the one ounce, but as items get heavier, um, the price is going down, as you can see, and, and significantly in some cases. So the key thing that we focus on in, this, in these webinars, and I just want to make sure that we point this out, is a, the post office gives you the rates, and they say, here are the rates. But it's really hard to figure out how does that impact you. So what we're going to be doing in every class of mail like this is, is showing you what's the rate today, what's the new rate, and what is that percentage change, and how that impacts you. So we're going to be going through this for every class so to make it easier. So now most of you don't do first class, let me back up for a sec. Most of you don't do first class mail single piece. Single piece is, it, you know, for letters is you go to the post office and you buy a roll of stamps. Most people have mailing equipment in their offices, whether it's postage meter, whether it's PC postage. Those rates are going up less. They're going from $0.47 cents to $0.50, cents, about 
three or four years ago, the post office came up with a new mail category called metered letters. It's only for letters. The flat rates we just looked at are the same. You know, are the same. Everyone pays the same flats rates. But if you're if you have mailing equipment, the post office gives you a discount for either po having a postage meter or a PC postage. So that rate was 47 cents, and it's going to 50 cents, a 6.4 percent increase. And again, the second ounce rate because it's going down you know, makes it where it's a price savings on a two and three ounce piece. But again, the majority of mail is one ounce. So you really have to factor at least a 5% increase on your first class mail, knowing for the typical fact that most companies do less than 10 or 20% of their mail as two or three ounce items. So to be safe, factor at least a 5% increase in this category. But when you look at this, if you don't have any professional equipment, if you don't have a postage meter or a PC postage solution, based on the volume of mail, you may want to consider it. If you do a thousand pieces, a thousand dollars a year in postage, you know, and you're buying stamps, give or take, that's about two thousand pieces, or about a hundred dollars in savings. You know, mailing systems or meters and PC postage start at about fifteen dollars a month, or about two hundred dollars a year. Not to mention the convenience factors of having equipment. So there's lots of reasons why this is a great thing for the, for the mailing industry because it makes the justification of having the equipment stronger in the fact that it saves you more money having it. It used to be a three, you know, at first when this discount, when this class started, it was one or two cents. Then it went to three cents on the last rate increase. And then it went to five cents on this, on this rate increase. And if you're in Canada, I think it's 20 or 25 cents is a difference. So the post office may have room to increase these discounts uh, of this metered letter class. First class mail commercial. So commercial mail is you're, you're, you're processing your mail through a discounted process where you're either using a pre-sort service, you're, you have barcoding automation software in your office, you outsource it to a third party provider to do it. So these are the rates that you're dealing with. Um, overall for letters, you know, it's based on your sort levels of mail. Real quick for anyone who's not comfortable with these rules, um, these, these different rates, five-digit, three-digit, AADC, mixed AADC, just means if you have a mailing of, a, of a 10,000 pieces, if you have 150 pieces going to a five-digit zip code like 90210, like the show, um, you get the five-digit rate. If you have 150 pieces going to an AADC, which is multiple, a grouping of three-digit zip codes like 902, 904, 906 as an example, you get the mixed the, the AADC rate, and then everybody else gets the mixed AADC rate. And if you manually sort your items without any automation software, you get the 4.5 rate, 4.58, or the uh, just the pre-sorted rate. So you can see from these rate structures, what's interesting about it is the deeper you sort the higher the percentage of increase. So the pieces that you're sorting to the, usually the best discounts go to those pieces that have, you know, the highest density because you're doing the most work for the post office. You're getting it deeper into the postal system. Those are actually getting a 1.3% increase and then all the way to 0.9. And if you're just doing a basic free sort, it only goes up, you know, 0.2%. With flats overall, it's a two to 3% increase except for the most basic class. And the reason for that basically is most people who are doing automation flats use a pre-sort service. The pre-sort service is charging the clients typically around this pre-sort rate here. So although that rate's not going down, the gap um, between what the clients can, you know, what the pre-sort service is making is probably going down a little bit with the fact that these increases are happening. Postcards rates are staying flat. Full service IMB customers still qualify for the 0.003 savings if they're running it through IMB qualifi qualifying software. So what's also interesting, when you look at flats and you look at, okay, what is the impact of the second ounce cost reduction for the additional ounce cost reduction of the six cents? And you look at it and you say, okay, if I was running a seven ounce flat, it was costing me $1.96 before, and now it's going to $1.62, a 17% decrease. Most of the time when people send flats, it's in this three to nine ounce range. And you can see the savings are pretty significant in that. In that. So if you're doing a lot of flats, whether it's through automation classes or non-automation classes, the savings are going to be pretty significant with this rate change. So your first class mail savings options. So the interesting thing about first class, so let, let's just take you through the options. So 
it's 55 cents now. It will be 55 cents for a retail stamp. If you're metering it, it's 50 cents, so it's a 5% decrease, a 5 cent decrease. If you run it through automation classes, it's 38.3 to 42.8. So you can see it's a 14 to 23% savings by using automation software over the metered rate, which is significant. But if you use automation rates, the post office gives you the one ounce rate up to 3.5 ounces. So if you're sending a metered letter, a three ounce metered letter that's going to be 80 cents in January, that same piece only costs 38.3 to 42.8 to run it through a commercial automation rate because it's up to 3.5 ounces. It's a 47 to 52 percent savings. So if you're on the fence, of, so the way you get these discounts is you either have software in your office to apply the barcodes. And the software, basically what it does is it validates your addresses, sorts them into the right order, and then generates the postal, soft, the postal documents that you need, you know, and then submits that information to the Postal Service so your items can be printed with the address and a barcode in the address block typically. That's what the software does. If you don't want to do that work, you don't have enough to qualify, or it's not justified, what most people do is they'll use a pre-sort service. And a pre-sort service picks up your mail at the end of the day, um, commingles it with their other clients, and then does all that barcoding work for you to get these discounts. Or some clients just outsource the entire mailing, and then it's important to make sure that the outsourcer is getting these commercial rates. But it's important to know the savings is incredibly significant if you have the volumes to do it. Marketing mail. Marketing mail was formerly called standard mail. Post office changed the name, I think it was last year, because standard sounds terrible. And in the majority of what's going through this class is, in fact, marketing. So you're seeing a 1% to 6% increase. Flats are seeing the highest increases. Um, and destination entry discounts are decreasing. So let's talk through that. So if you're sending letters, you're seeing about a 2% increase overall. You know, uh, and it's even regardless of sort rates. You, know, you can see it here. Um, if, you're, if you're a nonprofit, you're seeing basically 1.5% um, to 2.5% increases. Um, if, at your lowest sort levels, the increase is a little bit less, which is nice. If you're sending flats, you're seeing significant increases, 3 to 6% increases for, um, for commercial flats, and then 2 to 6% increases for nonprofits. Now, destination entry discounts. If, what destination entry discounts are is if you can move your marketing mail further into the postal system, either to um, into a delivery, like a distribution network center or um, a sectional center facility, then the post office gives you extra discounts for you moving the mail closer to its final destination. What's interesting about those discounts is for letters, you were getting 2.4 cents off by doing that. That's going to 2.2 cents, which is a, a, a decrease of 8.3%. And if you're getting things to the sectional center facility, you're losing 0 0.003 cents, which is about a 10% decrease. So your discounts are changing in those. If you're doing flats, you're actually getting an increase in the, in the discount and about a 5% change. And for this sort level, it's staying flat. So it's just these little nuances, if you do large volumes of mail, make a big difference. It seems like fractions of a penny, but when you're doing tens or hundreds of thousands of pieces or millions of pieces, these things really add up. So let's go through all of your first class savings options real quick. So there's a five cent savings on letters from 55 to 50. If you use a pre-sort service, and usually you can use pre-sort services if you're doing 500 pieces a day or have one-time mailings of 1,000 pieces. A pre-sort service in your area could be applicable. And they can get you these types of rates, and you can see how those rates work. Um, you can automate the mailings in-house in, in your office to get these rates. Um, you can flats and postcards um, have the same automation rates as letters. Um, as that we're looking at here. And you can consider moving generic content to marketing to marketing classes or to nonprofit if you qualify. I know there are a couple co um, colleges on this call. And you could, you could see what the rates would be. So what's interesting is you go from $0.55 cents all the way down to $0.14 cents based on how you process it. Or $2.35 all the way down to $0.42. Cents. So it's just, this is the way people save money when it's optimizing these classes. Next, can you convert lightweight flats to, um, to letters? 
And the way you do that is if you're sending lightweight items in, in 9 by 12 or 10 by 13 envelopes, could those be folded in half? And by doing that, it can be over a 50% savings. And you can look at this. If you put you know, 6 to 10 sheets of mail into a flat envelope, it's still a very light flat, probably costs $1.30. If you folded those into a 6 by 9 envelope, it would probably be $0.65. Cents. If you use a pre-sort service, it would go down to $0.41. Cents. And if, if you automated it yourself, it would be $0.38. Cents. So you can see it's a huge difference in cost. Next we move to commercial rates. Um, there's two classes of mail. There's, re, there's, um, there's like their standard services and their competitive classes. The competitive classes the post office considers basically shipping services, but there are other providers um, who can provide the same level of service. Priority mail is the most common service that people use. Priority mail, um, there's three different ways that you can rate a priority mail piece. There's retail, the rate you pay at the retail counter of the post office or through a postage meter. Commercial base rates, which means instead of just slapping a meter uh, imprint or buying a stamp, you put the 4 by 6 label with the destination address, a tracking barcode, and the return address. And then there's commercial plus is if you have larger quantities, 50,000 pieces of um, or more, you can have an agreement with the post office to get commercial plus rates. And then there are some resellers who are able to get you to use their reseller rates, even if you have lower volumes, to get these commercial plus rates. So priority mail is for anything less than 70 pounds. So anything 13 ounces to 70 pounds, one to three day delivery throughout the U.S., nine zones based on distance, just like UPS and FedEx might work. They have flat rate, um, flat rate items. Um, like where you have pre, you know, boxes and envelopes that the post office provides, and then you have the ones that you're weighing yourself and using your own packages. So you can see there are interesting things that are happening. Retail rates are going up the highest, 6 to 8%. So overall, the retail classes are seeing a huge increase because they're trying to push people to do commercial, and the commercial rates are seeing a negative 1% to 4% increase. So and then what's really interesting is this commercial plus class, if you were getting these rates you know, with, for the high volume customers or someone using a reseller, they're going away. The commercial plus rates starting in January uh, will be the same as the commercial base rates, okay? so, which is a huge change for people that are taking advantage of those discounts today. Priority Mail Express. Retail rates, again, are growing the fastest. You can see 3 to 9% increases overall. The commercial rates are going up at three to six percent, and again, the commercial base rate, is, the commercial plus rate, is the same as the commercial base rate. There's no changes in that. They're actually the same rate. Uh, a few years ago, the post office kept the class of mail, it's, but it's the same exact rate as commercial base. So, tips to save money in this: move to commercial rates. So. It, on average, the difference between the retail rates and the commercial rates are 18% less. 18% less. And if you look at the lightweight items, it's even less. Um, Priority Mail Express are 13% less. So by just switching from slapping on a meter tape on your mail machine for your priority to physically having a simple software tool to do it, that you click it and you type in the address, it's 18% less for Priority Mail. You get free tracking on USPS.com. Um, if you're using USPS Click and Ship, which is the USPS.com free service, that only entitles you to retail rates. They changed that a few years ago. There's multiple vendor options to, if you want to get this type of software. Sometimes they're included with higher-end mail machines, so you should check your mailing equipment contracts. Um, other than that, you can get simple solutions starting at about $15 a month to do this. Um, but we would strongly recommend, if you're doing a lot of priority mail, that you look at this. First class mail package service. So the post office has this unique edge. Anything that's a package but less than a pound, they, have this, they, they can do it for significantly lower rates than the, pri than the private carriers who basically start at the one pound rate. The big changes that are happening in this, and they're having huge changes in first class parcel, mainly for the reason that uh, the post office realizes they don't have any com competition in this, is that there used to be a flat rate. If you were sending a 10-pound parcel retail, it was $4.45. If you could generate the 4 by 6 label commercial, it would have been $3.50. The post office is moving to zone-based. So 
basically they're going to say, you've got to enter the zip code on these packages, and they're going to give you a different rate for things that are closer and a higher rate for items that are to farther away zones. So you can see these rates. You know, that 10-ounce piece was $4.45. is going to $5.19 to $5.66. If it's commercial base, it's going to three fit from $3.50 to $3.82 to $4.33. So you can see significant 16% average increase for the retail class, 12% average increase for the commercial class, a significant, like one of the highest changes in this whole rate case. If you can convert, again, the value of converting from the retail to the commercial, look at the difference in the rates. It's any, typically 25 plus, it's 20% 20 higher or greater based on the weight of the items. But you can see most of the weights that you're going to be using, most people are going to be in that sort of 6 to 12 ounce range who do this. And that's 25, 23 to 25% or more. Higher items, the, also the interesting thing is retail rates end at 13 ounces. Commercial rates end at 15.99 ounces. So anything here that's over 13 ounces going to retail rates defaults to priority mail, which is why the rates go up so much. Where this is basically the commercial rate, um, it's still the first class parcel rate, package service rate, and that's why the savings are so much greater here. So look at the commercial savings examples. If let's say you do $1,000, we're looking at this, someone who does $1,000 a year, $10,000 a year, and $100,000 a year. Someone who does first class parcel, you know, the first class parcel rates on average are going up 27%. Lightweight priority mail, which is the most common, goes up 19%. And lightweight uh, priority mail express goes up 13 And I'm using lightweight here because those are the most common things people use the Postal Service for. So if you spend $1,000 a year to, through retail rates, they're go, it's going to be $805 a year through commercial, $195 savings. So you can see, and I'm using this example of the, of the $1,000 because you can get these solutions at $15 a month. 15 times 12 is $180 a year. So these solutions pay for themselves as little as $1,000 a year in postage spends. If you do $10,000, you can see you save $2,000. So on average, you're saving about 20%, which I think is significant. Some additional rate items, your first class international mail rates are basically staying flat for letters. There's so many different international mail classes that I'm focusing only on the most common that people are using, but your basic letters are staying flat. Library mail rates are going up 3%, 2 to 3%. Media mail are going up higher in the 4 to 6% range. Special services, certificate of mailing, 3.6%. Uh, registered, 4%. Um, certified mail, small increase, only five cents on the certified mail, um, 345 to 3 to 350. Uh, the return receipt is also only going up five cents on the on the retail and 10 cents on the commercial. And basically, tracking costs are staying about the same. A little bit of a change in the um, signature confirmation costs. So. A still, a great savings opportunity for people is to look at electronic return receipt versus the retail. If you're used to filling out the green cards for your certifieds, um, you can save $1.20 by moving to the electronic. And all the electronic means is instead of filling out this green card, you enter the address basically into a tool, and then you either print the certified label using special envelopes. You can use the stickers and just type in the, the tracking barcode into you know, your mailing system. And then you can track all of your, your certified mail in one place to get your proof of delivery and print out an 8 and a half by 11 sheet as proof of delivery instead of getting the green card. And it saves $1.20 per piece. But the best part is it gives you a visibility to every single certified piece, which have been delivered and which do you have signatures on. Where this, you kind of have to manually manage your green cards. Other saving tips. Compare rates with the private carriers on every package. So, it used to be you could just use one or the other. You can't do that anymore. And the reason is the benefits of the Postal Service is they don't charge extra fees for fuel, residential surcharges, Saturday delivery, address corrections. They have really good lightweight um, rates going to residence items less than five pounds. And they have that first class, um, first class rates where the, up to 16 ounces is less, you know, lower rates that we talked about. Benefits of UPS and FedEx is if you have a high volume, you can get negotiated rates that can be less than the Postal Service. 
They have guaranteed delivery with refunds. The post office doesn't offer refunds, guarantees, or refunds on anything except express mail. They have a ground service with one to five day guaranteed delivery times. Many are one to three days. You can get a dedicated account manager, and they're definitely going to have the best rates for items over five pounds or lighter weight items going to businesses based on your discounts. The most important thing is, in order to capitalize on this, what best-in-class companies or organizations are doing is they have systems that compare rates between these two these services on the fly, so they can make the best decision on a package-by-package -package basis. So the ways they do that is they either manually compare, they'll have a postal system and a UPS or a FedEx system, they'll have cloud multi-carrier systems that can be simple to complex, or they'll have more elaborate PC server-based systems with multiple carriers that can manage their rules and routes and routing and you know, interfaces and things like that. How to budget for this increase. We came out with this tool to sort of look at, based on your class, you know, your first class letters, you just budget a 5%, a 4.5% increase. Your flats, on average, about a 14% increase. Your parcels, you can see the rates. So this is a tool we created. If you're interested in this, you can send an email to doris.tam at postaladvocate.com, and she'll give you a copy of this Excel tool where you can type in your current spends, and it'll calculate what your budget should be for the next year. And even if you want to estimate, this could be an you know, easy way to play around to figure out what the impact is going to be for you. What you need to do. If, you're, if you have a mail machine, make sure that you download the new rates before January 27, 2019, when the rates take effect. There's links to the different vendors' websites. They may have, um, they, they each have supplemental information to tell you about the rate change. You can go to USPS Explorer website for more information. And then from the, from the, we'll send a copy of this presentation to everyone. We have a quick, quick cut sheet guide that looks like this that goes over all these rates right next to each other. Some people print them out and keep them next to their mailing system so they can see it. So we're happy to send this out to anyone who, who can access this link. So real quick in a summary, first class mail, 5% increase on letters, a 10% increase. Additional rate goes down. First class metered mail, um, it's a 5 cent savings over letters, but you're still getting a 3 cent increase. Um, first class mail commercial, a 1% increase uh, from letters, 2 to 3% on flats. Marketing mail, 1 to 3% increases, 2 to 3% for flats. Priority mail, 3% to 0% increase in retail, decreases in some classes, priority mail express, 3 to 9%, first class mail package services, the biggest, 6 to 22% increases. And the saving summaries that we talked about, you know, using a postage meter saves money, now 5 cents a piece. Convert letters, flats to automation classes, up to 60% savings. Convert priority mail from retail to commercial for, you know, 13 to 19% savings. Convert first class mail parcels from retail to commercial, 27% savings. Electronic return receipt saves $1.20. And then compare pricing across the private carriers to make sure you're getting the best price on every package. So we're going to have upcoming webinars. We're having a whole series of these. If you have other people that you think need this information, we'll be running these webinars closer to the rate change on January 16th and 23rd. And we're also going to have a whole educational series next year covering everything from pre-sorting to PC postage meters versus meters to top 10 ways to save money on mail, uh, how to recover lost postage. Um, there's new accounting standards going into effect this year for public companies, next year for private companies that people have to know. Um, top 10 ways to save money across your enterprise, what you need to do before buying mailing equipment, and then budgeting for the next year's rate case because every year they're increasing rates. And you can register at postaladvocate.com. If you need help from the experts, what we do is we help large organizations with multiple locations manage their mailing spends. And what we're the most proud of is on average, we help people save on average 60% on their equipment costs, which is average 1.3 million per client. We manage a fleet of 121,000 pieces of mailing equipment, probably the biggest mail portfolio in the world that we're managing for our clients. And um, we've saved our clients over $43 million. 15 million of which was from lost postage, vendor overcharges, and fees. Everyone on our team has experience in this industry. We have 230 years of experience. We have the only comprehensive web-based dashboard tools that can show you all your mailing expense across all your vendors. And we physically help our clients manage this category um, 
to make this easy. We work across all different industries. We work with some of the largest organizations in the country and in the world, in fact. And you know, our goal is to make this category easy. And for anyone who's interested, we're always willing to do a no-cost analysis to quantify the savings prior to you making a commitment to seeing what the savings opportunity is. And if you decide to move forward, we'll help you from everything from managing your credit requests, negotiating pricing with vendors, working with, with all your end users to validate they have the right equipment, to right size it, get rid of things people don't need, manage it all in a web dashboard, and then ongoing management of this category. We maintain it so you don't have to, or so you have the top experts in the world working on your behalf to try to drive cost reductions and efficiencies. So I want to thank everybody for coming today, and I want to open it up for any questions. I apologize for speaking a little fast at the end, but I want to make sure we got through all the information. And um, I want to open up to see if there are any questions. Okay, so there's a couple of questions. Um, are we getting a copy of the presentation? So absolutely, everybody will get a copy of the presentation in a download link um, in the post-webinar email, as well as you'll be able to find a recording or the copy of the slides under FAQs on, under www.postaladvocate.com. Okay, and then another question. Have these rates been approved? Are these going through 100%? Um, yes, they were approved um, about three weeks ago. They were approved, and they're going through um, on January 27th. The post office has to give you a, a, a planning period, and not only for you, but they have to make sure the software vendors can all, like, update the rates and get them into their systems. So they have to give, I think it's 45 days, although I'm not 100% positive the exact number of days. But there's a certain amount of days ahead they have to give warning. We're within that period now, and um, this is ready to go for January. Okay, thank you. Um, did I miss anything on EDDM? Um, no, we didn't cover um, EDDM just because it's it's a niche class. Um, we can there's a link if you go to the Postal Explorer web um, link that we have inside the um, presentation. It'll give you a link where you can figure out what those rates are changing. I just haven't studied those because it's a niche service. Everyday um, direct mail and it's a, a it's a marketing service that I'm, I'm sure the rates are going up, but I'm just not clear how much they are going up. Okay, and if I have an uh, MID, M-I-D, T-0-1-2-2-0, can you tell me who the USPS assigned it to? Um, and I guess we can call you after the webinar as well. I think that's a little bit more niche as well. Um, yeah. And then another question, do we still get the IMB discounts for first class automation? Yes, you still get the .003 discount if you run it through uh, a service provider or you have you know, this compliable software, uh, compliant software. And that still holds through for standard mail as well, or marketing mail, excuse me. Any other questions? Oh, I want to thank everybody for being on the call. Hopefully this is the type of information you were looking for. Please feel free to come to any of our other webinars. Like, or we have a big focus on education. We feel it's one of the most important things is that we can you know, help provide services to, to inform people about what's happening and then how to optimize this category because mail can be a huge expense. And as you can hopefully see, even though you're getting an increase, there's lots of different ways to reduce the cost that hopefully you can all take advantage of. So thank you all for being on the call today.